Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at debugging in Eclipse. And Eclipse has a built-in debugger which some developers don't use at all. And because if you want to know what's going on in your code, you can get by by just putting a sysout in it or um, if you're doing Android, a, a log statement. And then you can just use that to try to follow through what's happening in your code. But sometimes it's it's useful to be able to go through your code line by line and try to see what's happening at each line and where it goes wrong, if it goes wrong. And uh, for that reason, it's, it's useful to know about the Eclipse debugger. And there's also a similar thing in other major IDEs like NetBeans, for example. I personally, personally, very rarely, rarely use the debugger, but I do use it sometimes. So I'm not a huge expert on it, but I want to show you the basics of debugging, which certainly every programmer should be familiar with. So I've got a project set up here, and I've got a main method here. And let's just put some code in it to run. So I'll have a sysout, and Eclipse is having a thing. There we go. And let's put in here something like hello and I'll have another sysout down here and let's put finishing and maybe maybe just one more up here sysout starting now let's imagine that we want to debug this program either because we want to maybe get a better handle on how it works so obviously this one's extremely simple or we've, there's some error in it and although this one's very simple and the techniques that I'm going to show you, they're very useful for looking at far more complex programs. The first thing to do is to set a breakpoint. And a breakpoint is a point in your code at which you want the program to stop during its execution. So, so you can then look at it and then potentially go through it line by line. So let's let's say that we want to we want the program to start executing, but then to stop at the very first line here in main, and from then on we want to go through it bit by bit, line by line potentially. I'm going to set a breakpoint right here, so I'll go over to the margin here, the left-hand margin, and I'll double click, and you can see that a little kind of sphere has appeared, and this is a breakpoint, and I can get rid of it again if I right-click and go to um, toggle breakpoint to get rid of it or if I right click in this margin toggle breakpoint will switch one on if there isn't one there and you can also disable them temporarily like that so that they don't work but I'll just enable this one and then I'm, in, I'm going to run this program by going to run debug instead of run run so I'm not going to click this green run button I'm going to go to run debug and Eclipse will ask you by default if you want to switch to the debug perspective and I do so um, you probably want to tick remember my decision uh, but in this case I'm just going to say yes switch to the debug perspective and we'll switch to this debug perspective and you'll notice in the top right hand corner here there are various buttons that you can click on to go to various perspectives and sometimes these kind of collapse into a little kind of widget and they get hidden but you can always look up here in the top right hand corner to see your various perspectives and to switch between them. So I'm in the debug perspective and my program started running and it stopped at this first line and uh, if we look up here there are some buttons that are relevant to debugging in a toolbar here and the ones we'll particularly be using are this button which is resume and that runs your program until the next breakpoint or until the end if there are no more breakpoints stop which of course stops your program and these two step into and step over and step over will run your the current code that you can see here line by line so if I click step over once or press F6 I go to the next line in my program and I click step over again and the next line and step over again and I'm on the last line now and I click again and finally my program has 
well, it's not actually finished because it's, it's tried to go into some kind of um, system code that I don't have the source code to. But if I click now resume, it'll just my program will just finish running basically. And let's go back to the Java perspective and let's make this a bit more complicated to make this more interesting. And what I'll do is um, let's first take a look at variables in debugging. So I'll create a variable here, let's say int value equals seven. And then somewhere in the program let's say let's say here incrementing value you don't have to have any sysouts to debug your program I'm just trying to put some code in here that actually does something to give us something to work with and then let's say value plus plus here and maybe value equals value minus eight and so on and at the end maybe I could do sysout value. Now let's say that I suspect there's some problem with value in my program. I've Let's say I've written a program in some kind of a way that I believe it should end up with a value 0 because it starts at 7, I increment it and then subtract 8, so that should be 0. But you, you can imagine that it's not doing what I expect it to do and I might decide that I want to look at it at this point here, this line, and see what's happening. So I, in fact I could, let's say, set a breakpoint at this line here. So I've double clicked in the margin right where we are incrementing value and then I go to run debug and switch to the debug perspective. And a lot of debuggers actually have a notion of watching a variable. So in C++, C++ typically, you would say that you want to watch a particular variable and then you could see the value of the variable in some kind of display. But in Eclipse, as far as I know, it doesn't have a way of watching variables, but what it does is in this variables pane here, it displays the values of all the variables that are currently in scope. So I've stopped at this line here at my first breakpoint, and we can see that the, the value variable here has the value 7. And now I could I could go step by step if I want to, or I could just go to my next breakpoint. Let's go to the next breakpoint, so I'll click the resume button, and we've stopped on the next breakpoint. And value still has a value 7, because we haven't run this line yet. The highlighting shows the line that we're about to run. And if I click step over again, now it's got the value 8, and let's go line by line now. and we've now subtracted 8 from the value and value has the value 7 and, um, and now I can just finish my program with resume. So you can see that this allows you to see the values of variables in your program and there's a lot more stuff you can do like um, you can actually look at the values of expressions and stuff like that but I don't really use that stuff much myself I use this at a pretty basic level and I've always found that to be sufficient but there's a tremendous amount of stuff you could do this could do with this debugger if you want to. One, one downside of it actually is that if you're running something um, like a web program or something often, often you can't run stuff by going to run debug it gets run by some other system and then you have to somehow attach the debugger and it can get a bit sort of annoying to work with but for a simple program like this or a swing program or something it's really great and there's one more thing that I want to show you in this tutorial which is stepping into methods so let's create a new class here I'll create a new class and I'll call it test and I'll just give test a couple of really simple methods so let's say here something like public int get initial value and I'll say in here that that creates um, a local variable let's say int number equals 5 and then let's say it could do some calculations with number like number plus equals 6 or 4 let's say and then it returns the number 
So again, not doing anything at all useful, but I'm just doing something to um, to give us some code to work with. And uh, I'm not sure what's wrong with this. Let's, say, let's see, uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I've given this um, a main method by mistake. Let's get rid of that and format the code. So I just want to give it one one method, not kind of main. You can't have methods defined within methods like that. And then let's say public um, public void do stuff, and I'll pass this a value. So int number, let's say, and just do sysout number. And maybe I could do something like number equals number minus six. So I'm just putting in some padding, some code that does something. And then here in the main method, I could I could use my class. So I'll have a test test equals new test. And here, or I'll call it test one, um, just to make it a bit less cryptic looking. And then say test one dot get initial value. And I'll use that to initialize value. And then later on, we could say test one dot do stuff. And I could pass in value again. And then we could carry on with the rest of the program. So the basic point is here that I'm just calling a couple of methods. And let's set a breakpoint up here near the beginning of the program. And actually, I'll get rid of these other breakpoints for the moment. And let's run this with run and debug. And I'll go into the debug perspective. And so at the moment, we've not got any variables defined in scope here, um, except for this args. And you could see what the command line args were, if there were any, which there aren't. And then I'm going to click, I'm going to click um, step over or press F6 and go to this line here. And now test one is equal to a test object we can see. And now let's say that I want to go into this method and see what's happening in that method. I can do that by clicking step into. So if I click step over now, it's just going to go to the next line in this file. But if I click step into, assuming that I've got the source code to this method, which I do because I just wrote it, will actually go into this method. And now I can use step over again or press F6 to actually step through this method. And I can see here that number has the value 9. And if I click step over again, um, it's going to go out of the method. And I could also use this step return, which will um, leave the method and go into the method that's called it. So it's going higher up the method stack. And let's just see step return in, in action, actually. I'll click that. And then we've gone out of the method. We, we left the method. And we can't see number now because it's no longer in scope. Number only existed within this method. And then I'll click step over again. And we might want to go into do stuff. So I'll go into do stuff. And now we can see the variables that I've got defined in do stuff, which is this variable that I passed in. And I can see the value of that. It's, it's nine. And this, notice that I couldn't tell that just from looking at this method because the value was passed in. So it's very handy to know here that the value of it's currently 9. And if I click step over again, then it's now 3 because I've subtracted 6. And let's click step over, step over. And now I've left the method and I'm back in my main, my main file here, my main method. And I can just step if I want to the end of the program. And hopefully you get the idea. It's it's pretty simple once you get your head around step into and step over. Let's just stop the program. And if you stop the program, you'll you'll stay in the debug perspective, and you have to go up here to the right hand corner, and you may even have to click a um, like open perspective or something if these have contracted due to there being too many perspectives open. And I'll go to the Java perspective. And here we are back in the Java perspective. You can also do stuff like um, if you right click the breakpoint, you can make it conditional, go to breakpoint properties, and you can make it um, only stop your program executing when you click resume if it has, if um, a variable that's in scope has a certain value at that point. And I, I've 
used that once or twice, but I don't really use it, so I couldn't tell you off the top of my head how to do this, but it is pretty simple. You just kind of type an expression in there, basically. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. And um, this is a technique that some programmers use a lot and some don't use at all, even professionals. And most of us, we use it occasionally when we're really perplexed by what's going on in our program and we can't get to the bottom of it with a few sysouts. And then sometimes it's just a lot quicker to go to the debugger. So hopefully that's useful and until next time, happy coding.